So Scott, what is God teaching you in this season of life? He is teaching me what it means to wake up every morning and crucify my flesh. And, and to spend time doing that every day so that I have a great compass of where I am spiritually. And we've been, uh, my wife and I, and a lot of people in our church, we read through Galatians 5, like kind of 19 through the end of the chapter, kind of every day. And ask the Lord to reveal to me where the different things that are listed as works of the flesh might be operating in my life. And um, sometimes it can seem like a legalistic exercise to do, but I've learned, and I thought that for a little while, but as, as I've continued to do it, I've learned that uh, God uses that scripture to reveal all these other things in my life that I want to be in prayer about, want to be in fellowship with Him about. And so as I, as I read through those things and just ask the Lord to reveal where they operate in my life, he opens doors for me to see other things in my life that, that might be going on or things in my friends' lives or my family's lives and different people that I want to be in prayer for. So that's been really cool. So I'll do that. And then kind of once I'm done asking him to, to show me where, where am I operating in the flesh, then I'll pray through the fruit of the Spirit, ask him to kind of make those things move in my life and grow in my life. And it's been a real beautiful thing to do. It's just a really cool, not like, like I said, not, it's not a, it's not a legalistic or even a ritualistic kind of thing, but it's more of just a uh, spiritual discipline for me that I love going through and, and allowing him to, and, and inviting him to show me what's what's going on in my life and where I need to, what do I need to, the deep corners of my spirit and my, my mind that I need to be willing to bring to the forefront and sacrifice to him so that he can then refine me and grow me. That's kind of it. Cool. Yeah, I know you just went to camp, youth camp. Um, Tell me how that went, and what any kind of opportunities you had there at that camp. Oh, it's incredible. I mean, love it. we're real involved with this organization called Young Life. It's been, I've been around it my entire life. It's just a real special ministry to high school kids. And I spent, you know, I've spent a whole month just hanging out with high school kids and hearing what's going on in their lives. And even, I, mean, I was in high school 10 years ago. Even in the last 10 years, the amount of pressure that's grown and the amount of just real, real deep darkness that's expanded in, mm. in their lives is astounding. And so, man, I think that talking to high school kids and ministering to them, one of the first questions I'll ask them, what's your relationship with your dad like? And if the kid's going through something really tough, nine times out of ten, their relationship with their dad sucks. Mm. And it's a, often the catalyst for whatever else is going on in their lives. And I think it's such a microcosm of us and the Lord, and if our relationship with our dad's not great, then our life crumbles and it's, it's, it flows down into, because God has an order and he is our father and then he put earthly fathers up, uh, above us and as authority, you know, in front of us. And if we don't have that to see what a relationship with Jesus looks like, then we're going to run to all sorts of things. And so that's one of the biggest things that I've, I've, I see in high school kids and more and more, and I think that it's, uh, it's just tragic the things that they will run to in the absence of both a relationship with Jesus and then the thing that most uh, tangibly mimics their relationship with Jesus and being a relationship with their earthly dad. And it's incredible what they're up to. So, I mean, it's, I love being out there, but it's definitely uh, it's emotionally intense and spiritually intense because you get to talk to these kids and fight all these battles with them. And, and, you know, our biggest prayer is that they go home and walk out what they learn. Because it's one thing to be up on in the mountains in Colorado in this beautiful place away from all the distractions and cell phones and iPods and TV and all that. And it's one thing to be up there and, and say, I'm going to go home and, and walk this out. But it's another thing to go home and have those distractions slammed in your face and then have to walk it out. It's intense. Mm -hmm.